my beautiful people, guess who's back? Hey, my people, how are you? <laughs> so it was requested that we do a mukbang on, well, not really a mukbang specifically, but that we do a video on why we went vegan, how we went vegan, da 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 da, -da right? So that's what we're gonna talk about today while we're eating. So can you tell them what you made? So we made a chickpea curry. So there's broccoli in here, potatoes, coconut milk, uh, chickpeas, and then it's seasoned with curry, salt, pepper, onion, and garlic is in here as well. Carrots, uh, celery, and I think that's everything, right? And coconut milk, I tomato. said, and tomato, and coconut milk. I mentioned coconut milk again because coconut milk is your ace in a vegan kitchen. It makes things really milky, but it also has kind of like a cheesy flavor to it. Um, and I really like it. Actually, if you look at a lot of vegan cheeses, uh, sometimes a lot of the times they have coconut in there to get that creaminess. Yes. Or other, another kind of nut. So what we're going to discuss today is how we went vegan. How? I will start, right? Ever since I was a little wee lad, horrible accents, take two. No, ever since I was very little, I was extremely picky, extremely picky and difficult to feed. Everything was disgusting to me. I looked at all my food. I observed it like this. I watched it. I spat things out a lot. I just looked very ungrateful. I was always called ungrateful. But I think all the while, I was supposed to be vegan. Still picky, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Still I picky, by the way. Very cautious about trying things. Um, but I was specifically that way with animal-based food. Um, I couldn't eat anything with a bone in it. It was just gross. And I didn't like anything with, like, you know, veins and, like, the white thing. What is the white thing called? Like, like cartilage yeah, or fat. Yeah, that. Oh my gosh. You were very oh. picky when you did used to eat. Yeah, even when I did, like later on in life, when I when I did, like when I went to Dimitri's house and stuff, like at 18, 19, I would not eat anywhere close to the bone and stuff like that. It just, I would leave a lot of stuff on there because I didn't like it. All the while I was eating it because everyone was eating it around me, cooking it around me, mm -hmm. but it never jives with me specifically. Dimitri has a different upbringing. Me, on the contrary, I actually ate nothing but meat and dairy for the majority of my life until about about 18 when I started eating other things, but solid vegan when I was like, what, like 21, 22? So it was a long yeah. time until I became Ooh. vegan. Um, we were actually talking to one of you in the comments uh, the other day about how I used to eat. And when I was a high school athlete, uh, I played wrestling and football and I used to bulk up t badly for half of the season. And then for wrestling, sometimes I would cut and I would like bulk down or lean out for a another section. So basically I used to have like three fried eggs, fried salami, um, cheese and butter on Cuban bread. And that would be my breakfast during bulk season. Um, my lunches, I would always have cheese steaks at school and then dinner I had like two pork chops and potatoes and rice and the only vegetable I really ate was either a potato or corn, which are both starchy. I didn't have green beans, broccoli, none of that. I was grossed out by it. Um, and then what I thought was healthy for me and what was lean for me was when I was cutting, I just used to have white rice and, and chicken. That's all I used to eat. So like breakfast, lunch and dinner. I had meat and dairy for the majority of my life. And we joke about it all the time. I barely ever had water. I don't even know how I was surviving. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're like plants. We need soil. We need air. We Sunlight. need sun. We need water. And I wasn't really getting water. Whatever I was getting from like juice and milk and stuff, which is not much. And even if I had fruit, I didn't even have fruit that much. I only had like bananas and the occasional orange. But I didn't really have any fruit at all. And like to go on that point... The only thing Demetri and I drink now is water. We don't drink coffee. We don't drink tea. Although I would like to get into tea because I think it's so healthy. Oh my God. People just look so good drinking tea to me. In the age of being outdoors, I, I would have tea. Yeah. You know, I would have tea. I might sneak a little coffee in, but I'll talk about coffee because I kind of have, we have a personal thing with coffee now. Um, me, I think more on a sociopolitical thing. You, I think more on in terms of health and addictive qualities about yeah. caffeine and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we might talk about that during this as well. Yeah, so now we only have water. Um, occasionally, 
will make juice because we have a juicer, but it that'll be a meal. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be like on the side like yeah. it used to be. We're actually in our neighbor's, I'm in our landlord's like section of the house and we're watching her cat. So you might hear her little kitten being all playful and cute. Additionally, I really, really loved animals when I was younger. And because I grew up in the projects, you're not allowed to have animals in the projects because um, you know you're, your, your house is being paid for. You're not supposed to have enough money. So you can't have pets because that means you have money for like lavish, luxurious things. Well, to be to be uh, specific, <laughs> this 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 project was Section Eight housing, so it was like housing assistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's why. So I used to always try to sneak all the cats in all the time. I wanted all the cats that were in the dumpster. I was like, come on, try to give them milk and try to like lure them in. Um, Which, by the way, you shouldn't really be giving your cats milk. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> yeah. If you want a video on like cat safety and cat health, we can also do a video on that yeah. featuring Cascady, our kitty, which <laughs> you'll probably see in a card right there of her in the park. Yeah. So that's that. Then when I was like 17, somehow I came across this video on Facebook um, of this person abusing this cow, like, uh, like a dairy cow. Um, he was stabbing her udders with like this pitchfork or a rake or something. And I was deeply disturbed about the whole entire experience. He was punching her in her face um, with all his might as a grown person. He even hurt his hand and he was going like this after he punched her. <sighs> so with that video, I started looking into, you know, like how cows are treated and how animals are treated. Like not only like that one individual case, but just like how they're treated being caged up. And obviously as a 17 year old who like loved animals, I did not like what I saw. So um, I'm like, I moved in with Dimitri and I was getting food stamps for like two or three months um, after I hit 18. And I um, started buying like Morningstar. That was like, that was the brand at the time. And this was 2010? And, yeah. This was 2010. Mm -hmm. For you vegans out there that have went through the stages of the beginnings of vegan food, like vegan processed food and like how it is now, you know, you knew in 2010 it was different. Yeah, so I lived in a house with a whole bunch of, they cooked so much more different from my, from like the way that I grew up eating. And it was very like rice, meat, corn, or rice, meat, potatoes. Like that's literally what it was like all the time. So um, I went to buy all these things and... It did not work out. I didn't like it. It was nasty. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't know how to be vegan. I didn't know how to cook. I didn't know how to... No one around me. I had nothing. Okay. I was like alone in the world wanting to be vegan. And after like a few months, it just did not work out. Mm -hmm. So I went to back to not being vegan for a while. Fast forward, right? We got kicked out. We ended up getting this like last minute, really seedy apartment. Um, and we lasted there for 11 months. We dealt with like mold. There was like abuse going on, like gunshots. The police raided our house while Dimitri was in the shower. And I just got out of the shower. So I was in my towel. I was having a total panic attack. Like it was a terrible place to live in, but we were really poor at the time. So we were getting, we were going to the food pantry, like churches. We were waiting in line, like super early taking the bus and waiting in all these lines and getting whatever they got, like whatever they gave to us. Cause it's like, you know, you can't be picky in those situations. And there was a lot of things that I didn't know how to make. Like there was this like random piece of, of like animal that we got. I don't know what animal it was. I don't know what part it was. And I did not know what to do with that. I ended up giving it to somebody else, but right. yeah, we were there. And that was the moment where we started learning how to cook. Cause we were being given like, you know, random things. Yeah. So we were just Googling things. Um, yes. And then we, the internet. Uh, I worked at a supermarket, so we would just wait for things like either in produce or bread to go, like, or everything on else sale. to go on discount, even just regular grocery products. And we would just get whatever we could. Um, so that was a stage of like a lot of pasta sides. Um, yeah. What else? Like potatoes, trying to see what else we could do chicken with bags of potatoes. Yeah. Chicken nuggets, sandwiches. So, Eating you know, like garbage. yeah, we, we moved up a bit from like microwavable stuff um, and just, you know, like the standard breakfast of cereal. Yeah. <laughs> and then we slowly started cooking. And I think one of the first meals that was vegan that kind of carried us over was uh, was um, the the creamy garlic pasta. Oh, wow. No, we you're fast forwarded. Oh, We're I not did. Even there yet. I did. I started making eggplant 
like oh yeah that was the first thing like that was like yeah, what I started. we did like that for dudes and like we never ate eggplant so i was like girl this is big this is a win mm. so we started to slowly introduce things i would also make like uh broccoli with mac and cheese like i'll get fresh broccoli and i'll put it inside the mac and mm. cheese so that was like another thing just that's what i was thinking of slowly sneaking in you know veggies i was way more into veggies than dimitri was um and mm. fruit as well but um but we had a different upbringing so moving on we ended up leaving that place and moving into a place like literally down the block. Another down apartment block. building. And it was block. also pretty much just as bad. Yeah. Um, and this was the place where we started to transition even more. We had a little bit more money at this point. Mm -hmm. um, we were working, getting, just earning more. Mm -hmm. Having Dimitri had like three jobs. So to, so to give you a bit of background. And went to college. On that part. I, and you'll see that like the the economics of it all really influenced us going into vegetarianism and then veganism you're going to find out because we still stick by it that is cheaper um mm -hmm. depending on what areas you're in it could even be cheaper than cheaper for some places like we grew up in a caribbean area where it was a black and latinx community so there were a lot of smaller supermarkets where the produce was pretty cheap um we had things called farmers farmers markets, but it wasn't like farmers markets like I guess out west and down south in the United States, where it's kind of them setting up a stand, um, and yeah. and it kind of being like a flea market style. These farmers markets were warehouses, um, kind of like brick and mortar, brick and mortar, very much like either you know a hole in the wall store or like a BJ's kind of type or Costco type, where it would just be pallets and bins filled with produce that was like grade C and grade D, um, which just basically means it was just the uglier parts, um, the uglier fruits and vegetables, the lower quality ones. So although we weren't shopping organic and we still aren't shopping organic for the most part, we do get our veggies pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. um, this is all to say though, that when we first moved out, um, I literally got my first job uh, at 18. Jesse was already working too. We were both in college. And then slowly we started getting more money because we found networks and ways to get other jobs. And so, I also had 8,000 in savings because I was working since I was 14. Yeah. So if we were ever like really low, I didn't want to dip into that because you, you know how I'm built. Mm -hmm. But um, but it was there as a cushion, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so we moved into the next space and there we just started cooking more because we had more money. Um, and we even went to like, we even got like a Costco, we, we did a free DJs. membership. It was a free membership for 14 months and we started buying in bulk. And that actually is like, you can see in the beginning of my channel, that was like when all that was going on. And even when I had already been vegan for a year, I have like kind of that documented, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. And so what happened is when we got to BJ's and stuff like that, we started to, look up a lot of meals our mentor left our mentor was jamaican she would make us a lot of like um acting crawfish or tilapia i didn't like acting crawfish no offense um but i liked the tilapia like the way she made it when she left she was like the last person that we had like kind of a familial connection to so we had we had no one now but each other to cook and to like enjoy food with one another you know break bread that kind of thing and um we were also experimenting we were jumping around a bit. There was like a five year period between us moving to that other apartment building where we started exploring vegetarianism. It was like a month though. Yeah. Vegetarianism wasn't long, but you, I, cause I, I kind of wanted to go more quickly into it. I didn't feel good eating cheese and eating yogurt and all that stuff because I, kept I knew bit, yeah. that it had casein in it and I knew that it was very addictive. We, the, the thing that also helped us become vegan was watching a lot of documentaries, reading mm. a lot, watching videos, doing note taking, like just studying all of the psychology mm. of how we're not even vegan right now. Like how people are not studying all the commercials, the marketing, the just all the stuff that's mm. happening. We were like, oh, we see now mm. what's going on here. And it's all linked. Like, you know, food. It's pretty sick. Politics economics it's capitalism it, it's all kind of linked together into this amalgamation to try to box you into something mm -hmm. hey we might have a friend um that'll pass through in the video we'll have cameo appearance appearances from cats probably yep <laughs> throughout the rest of this video um yeah so our mentor left so we didn't have that familial attachment or that influence anymore it was kind of just us now so that's when we started experimenting in the kitchen um, that's when we started trying to own our food, 
um, H-O-N-E, you know, like get better at it. <laughs> and we actually started exploring a lot of our cultura with the food, like our cultural food. And that realizing, was, that made it easier. realizing that, yo, a lot of the stuff we grew up eating, we could still make it vegan. Sancocho. Mm -hmm. Which is nothing but tuber vegetables. Way faster to make. Way faster to make without putting animal in it. Mm -hmm. Pasteles. Mm. Pasteles, yeah, which would have meat inside and you have to wait to cook the meat through. Now that you don't have the meat and you just have the different substitute, you, you, you know, you're not, you're just, spending, you're cutting your time like in more than half. Yeah. Which is insane. Um, and also everything that you could do with beans, mm -hmm. right? Like chickpeas and different beans, the ways you can mash them and mold them and season them yeah, and amazing. braise them and all that. Yeah. It was, it really opened up a new world of work for us. And Dimitri never ate beans before, by the way. I and have. being Puerto Rican, I was like, how are you not eating beans? That's always so weird to me. Like yeah. when I found Puerto Rican, they're like, oh, I don't eat beans. I'm like, yeah. how? Yeah. How does that happen? Yeah. Because that stew, like the habichuela, right? It is so amazing. And I can't common. believe that people don't eat like beans. Like when you're Puerto Rican, you make it with sazon, sofrito, adobo. I'd be like, what? <laughs> But yeah, and eventually I got Dimitri to eat, you know, beans, and we ate a lot of beans. I um, even used to like pick onions and stuff. I, I, I was so anti-vegetable. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yeah, but I didn't eat rice and beans until I was 18. Like I said before that, it was just white rice. Mm -hmm. So literally it was just starch and then a slab of flesh on my plate. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I just, I do not know how I stayed hydrated. I, I, I don't. <laughs> well, you used to have Gatorades. Oh yeah, Gatorades. Power aids, the vitamin water. I used to drink like crazy, and see, there you go, a bunch of sugary stuff. So sugar on top of all that stuff. Yeah. It was just, but yeah, we're sidetracking. So, yeah. Okay, we so, were cooking. That's how we slowly went into veganism. Our mentor left. We had no family support. We <clears throat> we got a little bit of money when we moved to a new place. B a BJ's opened up in the town, and they gave a fourteen mem month membership for free. We started getting like bulk things like chia seeds and we started trying a lot of recipes that were on YouTube like chia seed pudding or just like um, like this brownie batter breakfast bake. It's like mm -hmm. an oatmeal and you bake it and you could have oats like that tastes like brownies. Yeah. And then we would make nice cream like bananas, freeze them, put it on top. And we were like, damn, girl, and this is you, way better than what we were eating. And mind you, even though the food was amazing, it was something that we had to work at and it was an acquired taste. There was a lot of recipes we tried in the beginning that we didn't like. Like, I you did, did not, not like, like cheese. You didn't like, oh, you didn't like the vegan cheese. It you was like, like potato, carrot, butternut squat. I did not like that. We didn't like quinoa in the beginning. Oh my God. I not really like remember uh, one of the first vegan meals we tried to have. We tried to make quinoa pizza bites. And it was so hard for us to get through. I'm pretty sure if we made them now, it'd be slamming money. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, I think it's two things. One, it's developing a taste for that because when you're transitioning, you know, as soon as you become not vegan, I mean, as soon as you become vegan, uh, even if you're buying processed stuff, it's going to be a bit cleaner than some of the other things that they throw in it. There's still kind of like additives and stuff thrown in there, but it's, it's going to be different and you're going to start acquiring a taste for vegan esque kind of things so there's the, the acquiring of the taste and secondly just learning how to season i think yes. veganism is all about learning how to season the great part about fruits and veggies is that they already have a flavor and all you have to do is learn how to accentuate those flavors yeah, yeah. or balance those flavors mm -hmm. like i would have never thought I, I would have never thought of like putting lemon in a bunch of things like i used to have like lemon chicken and stuff but i was like oh that's that's what that is yeah but putting lemons like in our soups and in wraps and a bunch of other things like balancing those flavors is really great um that's how it slowly started to happen you know we didn't like stuff and then we like stuff and we learned that we had to make like we don't really eat plain quinoa even till this day mm -hmm. we have to make like one pot quinoas and then it's like delicious and then on the side we'll have a salad we'll throw tahini all over everything and then it's just like oh it brings it all together so you know you just learn it's a process everything that you eat now is because you learn to like it. Mm -hmm. And when you're raising children, which we're not raising children, they say, like there's a study, you need to have children try things 10 times before they can decide that they like it or not. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like that's so true. Like with in going vegan, like we have to try like 10 different quinoa recipes before we actually get used to the taste, the texture, before we get used to learning how to cook it and how to season it. And then we're like, damn, now we only eat quinoa as like as a grain. It's really yeah. a seed. There was even a time where we had to heavily season like broccoli, for instance, right? Now we could just yes. salt and pepper the broccoli. And, and we like, feel okay, good about it. it. Like, damn, broccoli tastes good. Yeah, green beans too. Green beans, mm -hmm. I used to... Ugh. I used to put a whole entire like bowl of garlic and like so much salt in mm -hmm. order to make like the green beans taste good. Now, like seen now, you know, you could just have it and it tastes pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this though. I, th I think we, we really learned at this point because there's a, basically every single person that lives in this house with us. Let me see. One, two, three, four, four other people besides us. They're all not vegan. They love my food. I'm not even like gonna, you know, too much. Two, two. Because I'd be like, two. Lying. They're, lying. <laughs> they're just saying that. Like, you're not gonna tell somebody that they cook nasty, but. But then on top of this, I've also br br brought it to venues before. And oh, everyone, yeah. you know, strangers and people that know us alike would be like, yo, this is amazing. So, what I'm trying to say is maybe it's not that we have acquired a taste for this stuff. Maybe it's that we've acquired a skill to learn how to cook it that other people that aren't vegan at all love it. So I think that that's what you have to learn how to do is acquire the skill for yourself so that you could, um, you know, really enjoy your food, basically. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's pretty much how we went vegan. I mean, there's yeah. there's nothing else to say on, on that end. However, let's talk about you a little bit because mm -hmm. I went vegan way quicker than you did. Now, it the was, rule yeah. was that Dimitri couldn't bring non-vegan stuff into the house. Yeah. And a lot of people don't agree with that. A lot of people could be vegan and not have anybody else in their house be vegan. I personally cannot do that. I need the person that I love a lot to believe in what I believe in, mm -hmm. to, to see it, to learn it, to know it, and to become it because I want both of us to survive for a long time together. I cannot have my husband not be vegan. But there are a lot of people, like I read like forums and stuff like that, and a lot of people have been mm -hmm. vegan for like 17 years and their husband isn't. And I'm like... And let me That's say this. That's amazing, but I can't do that. And let me say this. I still don't do vegan uh, 100% correctly, mm -hmm. right? Like, I favor my fats. I love peanut butter. Um, I love the natural sugars from um, fruits. I can go a little OD sometimes if we get vegan junk food, right? And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God this is something I haven't had like in a month or whatever. And then I could find myself overeating. So there is also the stigma of vegans being super healthy and i think there is a community of vegans that are super healthy uh -huh. but i think there's an ethical part of veganism first right mm -hmm. veganism for beef um for the sake of equality among all living beings right mm -hmm. um all living uh, sentient beings um which i mean i guess you got to be careful with the nuances with sentient because i'm pretty sure people in the comments those vegan haters are going to start coming with a well uh plants are sentient and stuff and then we're gonna have to go in and do those kind of conversations but when they happen they'll happen but you know just equality for beings was my ethical standpoint first right so i guess it was kind of similar to yours when you were like i'm in love with animals well you know i'm in love with the idea of everyone being equal and everyone having equal rights and everyone um everyone with good intentions being able to sit at the same table mm -hmm. you know what i mean uh no matter of who you are what you are or how you function, or how you live your life, right? Um, so, so Dimitri's basis is more political, like, mine's is more spiritual. Yeah, um, and, and in a way too, like I start dipping into the spiritual, and I think we meet in the middle of, in, in terms of ancestry, right? Mm -hmm. And like in terms of access, and in terms of even talking about like hunter-gatherers, for instance, and you know, if, if we have this same kind of like dental makeup, and these same physical abilities, right? Like, is it going to be easier to pick a bushel of, of blackberries, for instance, right? Yeah. Or go out and risk yourself during a hunt. Yeah. I mean, you know, scarcity was something that folks had to worry about before. Um, and unfortunately, scarcity still is something that folks in communities have to worry about today. And in that case, I can understand folks not being able to be vegan, right? Like, by necessity. But... And in, in, in developed countries, such as the U.S., I mean, anyone... Well, well there's food deserts here. Food deserts, food yeah. Deserts. See, there's, there's food deserts as well. And so. they also have built communities to be extremely mm. unhealthy. Yes, yes. And that's the thing, too. I felt like we had more access. Luckily, in, in our community, we had two Latinx supermarkets where we were able to get 
uh, vegetables fairly cheap, mm -hmm. especially because a lot of folks buy the meats, the dairies, the groceries. So there was a lot of stuff on discount all the time because it, it was going out. So mm -hmm. we were really able to save on that. And then when, once we had access to a car, we were able to travel a little farther to you get, get like cheaper six food. peppers for a dollar. Yeah. You yeah. get like 10 platanos for a dollar. Yeah. But they'll be yellow by that point. We yeah. eat yellow plantains. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Very affordable. Yeah, you can get like four or five mangoes for a dollar. That store doesn't exist anymore. Oh, Food Basics. So sad. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. so affordable. The first supermarket I worked at. Yeah. So, basically, yeah, Demetri wasn't allowed to have any, like, non-vegan stuff in the house. Um, and so, therefore, it took him a lot longer, like, a six months longer than I did to go mm -hmm. vegan. And he was catering at the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, he wouldn't be vegan <laughs> in the house. He yeah. would, um... You know, like grab a chicken finger while he was eating, yeah. that kind of thing. Well, actually, with that story, it was food basics when I was working at the supermarket where I was kind of like on the fence still. Like sometimes we would get food and I would get vegetarian food while I was there, especially if I was like working overtime. But I was trying veganism. I, I was at first time fully vegan when I had that catering job and I was working a 12 hour shift. And this is why Jesse's been vegan longer than I have for about six months or a year, because once I had that chicken finger in between my 12 hour shift, I had to reset my veganism again. And I basically started myself vegan all over again. And, and actually it's, it took me a second to transition again. So um, that, that's something that we face when we're thinking about food in terms of like culture and tradition and community and family and stuff like that too. Sometimes you can fall off because yeah. everyone else around you isn't vegan. And I actually have a couple of friends like that and I tell them and that's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. If you fall off of veganism and you have to do vegetarianism first or do the thing where you even have to have chicken flesh or fish flesh first and then kind of weed that out, weed dairy out. Like um, I know cheese is like one of the hardest things for people. I struggled with cheese for such a long time. Huh. Um, actually, I struggled with cheese. I, and by struggling at first, I needed to feel like I still needed the cheese once I went vegan. I still craved it for like about another year or two. And I had to do, I had to try to do alternatives. Uh, sometimes the alternatives didn't work. And eventually you lose the taste for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I released it. Yeah, you released I was it. Like, I was like, there's no way. Like yeah. every vegan cheese that you buy at the time, it yeah. wasn't the same. And I was like, if it's not the same, then I don't want it. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's the other thing about, for me personally, like Dimitri and I, we don't buy like faux meats or faux like cheeses or anything like that. I think we can. I'm just kind of disturbed about it personally. That's that's just me. But um, hmm. but it's totally. I think it's like a great that it exists, and can I you, think I think that it even exists better now. It like, does. Can you unpack that? Um, the, the idea of of it creeping you out. Okay, so so the idea of, of it creeping me out is that ever since I was younger, I had a, a really big maniapica, like ma, like manea. I had a big manea, which is like a like a pet peeve. A, yeah, like a pet peeve. I didn't know how to say that in English with texture smell look i was just very sensory based with what i ate and for me like animal flesh just does not cut it it just bothers me and there were a lot of times where you know when you're biting into animal flesh, it's very like chewy or hard there's an inedible piece that you bite sometimes there's a bone there's this we bought it like once or twice it was gardein tenders like i don't know if you know them but they're like it's like a little trapezoid kind of shape and I was very disturbed it was so realistic to me and it and it was like you know that kind of inedibleness that uh animal like protein it has was, a lot of the time it was bitey yes and and it just reminded me of like chicken nuggets and, and that kind of thing and I don't actually enjoy that stuff um, I do it just bothers me I still like that stuff and if you don't want to get processed versions of that stuff. If you really want to think about like texture, if you want to get that texture right, uh, cauliflower steaks, which we had in another video, are very reminiscent of that texture and flavor. And also uh, tofu steaks, like if you slice tofu, which is featured in your cookbook, right? You have a couple of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. tofu mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. in, in your Puerto Rican vegan Hibarito. cookbook. Hibarito. Yeah, the hibaritos. But the thing is with tofu, uh, so it's not so like, I, I guess not even fleshy, but kind of like too soft. smooth and crumbly soft. Mm -hmm. yeah. You gotta freeze it and you gotta get extra firm. So if you freeze it, then defrost it, and then you press it through, and then you have some, it's gonna be reminiscent of something like, kind of tough in texture. It's really good. Um, 
these are the kind of things you learn and being a part of this from game. being in the kitchen yeah 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 <laughs> so so yeah i'm just saying that um the reason why we don't get stuff like that is, well first of all it's expensive it's overly processed um we eat we try to eat like a lot of like whole foods plant-based uh, i'm not saying that we don't eat processed things because we do um but yeah i i don't get it because it just it disturbs me personally as far as like texture goes um smell like all that all that kind of stuff but dimitri does um he actually did like the gardening things and i think he he's totally more open to having we haven't had the beyond beefer or whatever it's called i do oh you did okay so I did he's, on vacation. he's more likely to say yes to stuff like that yes. and i'm more likely to have a major aversion to it yeah <laughs> and actually i've been blessed um that when i go on like business trips you know all the food is comped and paid for so when we go to vegan places i could get those more expensive and luxurious things on the menus yeah which has been great so i've gotten the faux meats i've gotten the tempeh the seitan that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but i haven't gotten it oh, at wow. home i haven't had tempeh or seitan yet yeah well a killer vegan Oh wow! Yeah, which okay. which was which was um. It's a buffet. It's a buffet, a breakfast buffet, um, in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, a vegan breakfast buffet. So I've been I've been able to do that before, but yeah, think and also just thinking about things in terms of budget. I I always opt out from getting those things. I've been close to getting like teas so we could put on like our sandwiches, and I could really throw down if we're making bakes and stuff like that. But I could just never justify it. Yeah, I, I think you said teas. You said cheese. Cheese. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, that is basically our vegan stories They're, they they mm -hmm. differ a bit and the basis on which we went is different because dimitri kind of went because i wanted to be vegan i want well i wanted him to be vegan so um so he did like he's mm -hmm. very cool that way because he even became minimalist because i wanted to be minimalist and i do believe in astrology i know a lot of people don't but i um i have my mercury the planet that like is the way that you think I have it in uh, Sagittarius, so I think super far out there. Sagittarius, he has like a little arrow and it's like, woo, and you don't see the forest from the trees. You're interested in cultural things. You can travel with your mind. Um, those vibes, that's all me. I see it coming out of my life so much mm -hmm. now that I'm older. Mm -hmm. And Dimitri, you know, has a different Mercury. My Mercury's in Aries. So if you're thinking of a ram and his head is just down or her head is just down or their head is just down and they're just barreling forward, that's how I navigate a lot of my life, right? Yeah. I get hit with opposition or I get hit with an idea or I get hit with a suggestion. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. Um, and the thing about Dimitri as well is that he, um, he is cardinal, right? And Aries is cardinal. So they actually are very movable. They're like, go, 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 go. Sagittarius is mutable. So it is half fixed, half cardinal. It's like, it is movable. You can, you can, you can make them budge. Uh, Aries, they're go, go, go. They're about that action though. And um, I'm actually really a Scorpio, so I'm super fixed. That means I'm staying right here. That's why it's really hard to get me to do things. But the way I think, you could change my mind. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's me. Um, and that's to say that, of course, I'm going to be interested in veganism, minimalism, zero waste, like lots of really interesting things and culture and languages. Like, I'm just so like cool the way that I think. I love the way that I think. If you're asking me what veganism is to me, veganism is not a diet veganism is ancestral for me it is it is my roots it is spirituality for me it is what i believe in i do not think that i should take away an animal's life at all i don't think i should contribute to that line just because i'm not doing it directly doesn't mean that i'm not doing it and i just don't believe that i should cause animals that much pain i feel really bad when i kill an ant you know what i'm saying Furthermore, I believe that veganism is better for Earth. And Earth is so giving to us. I appreciate Earth so fucking much. I'm not supposed to curse. I'll try to bleep that out or like... <laughs> I appreciate Earth so much. Like, I don't think that we should rape, rob, and just really take advantage of Earth the way that we're doing. Um, we're just depleting her. And like, the crazy thing is the way that I imagine living my life, like I'm nowhere near where I want to live my life. If I say what I say, I sound like a hypocrite because I'm not where I want to be. When I get a house, because that is the goal, I want land. I want to grow my own food. In the summer, I plan on growing all my own food. I don't know how I'm going to make it in the winter because we live in a four seasons state that, you know, the temper, the temperature changes dramatically. And... 
I want to grow all my own food. I want to compost like everything that I can compost. I don't want to involve myself in plastic and waste. I want to can. I want to help Earth. I want to help in the healing process. I don't want to contribute to the destruction mm -hmm. of, of Earth mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. For me, veganism is about increasing the circle of compassion. And Earth is a living being as well, you know, providing us with like trees and all these wonderful things. And animals are brilliant, okay? Like, even though squirrels are forgetful, it pays off because when squirrel when squirrels are getting all their acorns and they're like ready to hibernate they plant all their acorns and they forget about where they planted them and therefore they create trees everything in life in our life right now works as a circular system it's completely closed and beautiful and humans destroy that at like left and right and we're just so unnatural mm -hmm. like we're just so completely unnatural i just am baffled like as the years go on keep in mind i have my mercury my uh mercury and sagittarius i look a lot to animals to figure out how to live and there's like no animal on the planet that cooks their food like not one not one there's one animal it's a bird that knows how to create fire and it creates fire on purpose and it burns down forests it takes dry brush puts it all together and it flaps its wings and it like burns things down but it's more of like a territorial thing they don't actually cook their food and there's like yeah there, i just look to animals like, that's why i'm like i'm not cutting my hair anymore because i'm like yo if my hair is supposed to be like this then i'm not gonna cut anymore like why am i doing that like i'm questioning myself a lot and i think a lot about how animals live and like i don't even feel like we're supposed to go through these like big processes like this in order to get a meal you understand so i'm just like that's where my mind is right now it's not fully <clears throat> developed i don't fully know yet what i'm doing but i'm thinking about it a lot and it's a process you gotta trust the process when i think about our lives in the future you know i think about just <clears throat> being way more natural than i am now and being helpful and cool to earth and if i inspire other people to do that that's fine but i'm really just trying to do what i need to do to heal myself to heal earth to have all these connections with us and all the other beings that are on the planet and that's it that's me that's it so in short veganism like diet and exercise like going to work like doing your passions like talking to your friends like loving yourself it is not a diet it is not a process it's a lifestyle veganism like so many other things should be a lifestyle and have fun in that process while you're doing it um, and, and know why you're doing it. Uh, if you know why you are doing something, if you know how, why something is your lifestyle, it's going to come naturally to you. And veganism, like everything else for your own survival, should come naturally to you. Yeah. And just to end that, like, veganism is more than my lifestyle. It's my purpose for myself. Mm. Not my purpose for everybody mm. else in life, but it's the purpose for myself. Damn. I feel like I need it. I feel like it makes sense. It matches my life. It matches my values, my ethics, my my everything. And that's why, like, a lot of people try to shake me in the comments. And just people just in general just try to shake me. And, like, you're not going to shake me on that. Because it is, it is at the very core, I think, who I was supposed to be this whole time. Yeah. Unbreakable. That's it. You unbreakable. Period. Period. All right, everyone. Drop a comment down below. We hope you enjoyed this, and we'll be seeing you. Sorry, we took so long to make it. In the next it. video, it's a challenge for me and Dimitri to be on camera to talk for a long time. Yes. And then miss our <laughs> pounding cues. Pound. I'm sorry. <laughs> Peace right. and blessings, con mucho amor. Thank you for watching this video. Give me a like, comment down below, and I adore you guys.